And hello and welcome. Q Sports International and Predator present the Alpha Las Vegas Open. 192 players began three days ago playing 10 ball for a $125,000 prize fund. We are, this is day four and down to the final 32. We have a match and a half for you here. This could be the final of, of any tournament in the world and people would flock to see it. As you can see Feder Gorst and Kopini in the booth with, with me is Tim DeRuiter and this is George THL. Good morning. Tim, is this a match? <laughs> you think? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, quite uh, the matchup, especially it's already so early in the tournament. It's the last 32 in the field, mm -hmm. so yeah, quite early to already have such a killer matchup. Oh, it, uh, we've been seeing, we're, but that's today on the other table is Kachi and Shane. Uh, yeah, but the the field is just so strong. There is no easy matchup no more. It's all super close and top level. Don't know who to bet on. Don't know who to watch. You need three TVs, folks. Well, most of the people Look will. at the slag. Copy you one. You can. Left. I, 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 I can't see it. Yeah, well. I agree. Yeah. Um, but most of the people will favor Feder just because he's been on such a hot streak. Mm hmm. Copigny after COVID hasn't really been popping out somewhere. We all know he's a great player and we all know that he's capable of competing with, uh, with the best, mm -hmm. but he hasn't been winning that much tournaments as Federer has. So that's to where some people will like to say Federer is a favorite here. Yeah. But Speaking to that point, Copigny has only played in two of the, pre uh, the Pro Billiard Series events. Um, I'm sorry, he's played in three. And uh, Federer's played in eight events. Federer cashing in all eight and earning seventy thousand plus dollars in these just these events. Yeah. Copini breaks first. It's two races uh, to four or two. Uh, three races. To three four. races to four. Now, if they're tied, it goes to a third deciding race. And to make to complicate things a little more and give you more excitement. If the last set is tied at 3-3, it goes to a shootout. Yeah, so best of three sets. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard a lot of positive things already. A lot of people that like the, the change in the sing single elimination. Mm -hmm. Gives a little bit more play before you get to a shootout. And yesterday we already had one with Shane Van Boning playing Jeremy Seaman was a first single elimination match and of course we go to a shootout but that extra set really added some more pressure just before the shootout mm -hmm. so I think it's it's timed well now and to tell you the truth over on table one we had uh, Alex Pagulain and Tyler Steyer that also went to a shootout in the same format they were so close the entire way what a great match that was to watch, as I know that yours was too. Meanwhile, we have another one that's fantastic to watch. Yeah, it looks like Feder is straight on the three here, so we'll have to draw back to the short rail. Straight down. Doesn't want to get straight. Did good. Think so. Yeah. Just looking to see if he had a little bit too much angle. He could have a little trouble still getting up for the five, but it's perfect. He's going two rails, always running towards his next shot. Mm -hmm. Or always trying to, at least. In line, too. The ball. Another point to your, the point you made about both players being evenly paired or matched is that neither player has lost a set in the entire tournament. It's uh, pretty strong. Yeah, we've seen it many times. A lot of people say, "Ah, oh, in this pro bid series, it's just races to four. You just gotta be lucky." But then Kachi in Austria, he's won the event without dropping, uh, without having any shootout. So mm -hmm. without dropping mm -hmm. a set. Well, now these two gentlemen, same thing. So it's not just all about no. luck. Well, if it's all about luck, why are the final 32 
the highest rated uh, players from in Fargo. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm not saying it's luck. So well, I don't no, have no, to. No, I realize that's for the viewers. <laughs> that's for the viewers. Yeah, and looking pretty solid here. Good positional play. Always such a smooth stroke when he when he strikes the ball. There's no sound as well. It's just such a pure cue action. Yeah, Pope. Both players, I was watching them warm up and shooting the spot shots. <laughs> I might have jinxed it a little bit, but I got lucky. That's about as close as you'll see Federer to a miss. Yeah, and after that try break from Copigny, looks like Federer Gors is going to draw first blood here. Referee Jeff McGee from Shreveport, Louisiana, racking the balls for the gentleman. Using the Predator Arrow rack on the Predator Arcos balls. On this beautiful Predator Apex table covered with the Arcadia cloth. Reserve. I heard that for the first time, uh, was it yesterday in one of the matches? Where when they wipe the stick down, it squeaks real loud. Oh, you never heard that before? No, I really haven't. Oh, I've heard it so many times, especially in snooker. Mm -hmm. They do it a lot. Like they just clean their cues so much, like mm -hmm. so many times on a, on a day, just when they play a tournament. Somebody called it the cue stick violin or... Uh, <laughs> uh, sounds like a screeching violin. So it looks like... Feather is breaking from the table, from the center. We've seen some crazy good breaks on this table from the center, so the best results so far have been from the mm -hmm. center for me. Look, there we go, yeah. perfect break, and doesn't want one ball to drop. And does he have enough on that one ball, or did that three ball come into play? See, perfect heel ball control. But then, yeah, it's still crushed him as well. Oh, he, he crushes him so well. And he controls the cue ball. Yeah, well, I always said I'd rather crush him too hard and lose the cue ball a bit. Just I'd rather make a ball than care about the cue ball and don't make a ball. Mm -hmm. But if you can do both, in this case, the table is breaking well. Yeah, if you can do both, why not do both? Yeah, it looks like it one ball doesn't go. And if it's frozen to the rail, could be even more annoying. Yeah, it needs to mess around the three. I think it's his only shot. Yeah, a little bit too thick, and looks like he's left coping here shot. If not, I don't think he'll mind kicking it in. Also helps if right. if he thinks it's tricky. You could play with right spin. We'll twist the one ball a little bit more to the left. Yeah, that's what he did. Mm. Both players very smooth, great fundamentals, very very knowledgeable. So many championships. Kopini, 33 years of age, and Peter Gorst with everything that he's won in the last few <laughs> years. Uh, he's 22. 835 Fargo. A little further on the five than he probably would have liked to be. He's got such a smooth stroke that he can stay out of trouble all the time. Uh, layout obviously was very good after making the one not many challenges. And that's why I said yesterday, if the guys start to play to break like this, then the game gets really easy, of mm -hmm. course. It's a big difference compared to having 10 balls on the table, two problems, a bunch of saves. You know, you know one of the things I like about uh, when the players are successful breaking, especially in this format and having the referees rack, 
all the viewers that when I'm in the chat room on some of these tournaments, uh, oh, you know, slug rack, slug rack, slug rack, the referees. What do you say when they're breaking real good? Well, we'll go for a short one minute break and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. back live action Kobini tied at one yeah, interested to see that he's still breaking from that side rail mm -hmm. after that's such a great result from Federer from after Federer? the break I would definitely try to do the same well I wouldn't change my way of breaking if I was practicing that way I watched him practice and he was being successful with the break until I wasn't successful. Then I would look, look to see what my opponent's done, and then I would break that way. The only thing, though, you don't have that much time to no. evaluate all the time about your break. So, like, now it's already his second dry break. Yeah. Yeah. Could be he, very he costly. He the match. Yeah. Yeah. And look at this. One and a two in front of the side pocket. Three in front <laughs> of the corner. It's just, you yeah, got to do something with the four or seven, but... It doesn't look impossible, does it? Exactly. Yeah, what I was going to say about the slug wrecking and the brakes and stuff, mm -hmm. like, too many people are so focused on all that, and they're not focused on... I have seen so many matches where... Like, Petri, I talked to Petri Makkonen yesterday after his match. He said, man, if I break like this, I only had two dry breaks in the whole match. He said, especially in this format, it's amazing. Like... It is really possible, and now Federer shows like his first break was really good, so expect him to do more of that. Shane was breaking really well against Jeremy Seaman. Kachi was breaking well all tournament. Like, I don't yeah. really see a reason to complain. No, no, it, the ten ball rack is is tough. You, it's such a combination of things you have to do or to adjust to, depending on the table a little bit. Um, and of course you get used to the way the rack uh, it's a hand rack regardless but uh once you find the combination of those things and then just become repetitive with it you're going to be successful with yeah it. yeah great positional shot from Federer there just now we'll most likely have to shoot either the cut from where he's pointing at now or leave the cue ball between the six and the nine and take a longer more straight five ball mm -hmm. I actually do like to follow up a little bit and then shoot that option I just mentioned. I think he might leave himself just that, that big angle to make sure if he makes the five, he's good with the six. That's what he's looking for. They're looking oh, at. Or maybe there he's he just looked mine. at your window. Yeah. And it's it's a 50-50. It's tough. It's pure preference, I think. I don't have a problem with just putting the cue ball right back where it's at. I don't want to be too straight. I'd rather have some angle to mm -hmm. work with. Well, I'm glad he chose my <laughs> my <laughs> option. <laughs> that was a tough call. Yeah, so a longer five ball. We'll have to stun the cue ball in between the 10 and the six. Needs to be around the spot. And from there, yeah, really much more work. As Fargo rate goes, Federer has the second highest Fargo rate in the world at an 835. Kopini an 818, and he's 12th highest in the world. Yeah, especially on this high level. Nowadays, it's just 
it's not really how high is your Fargo, it's how do you show up at a tournament. If you're like in dead punch, then you might be able to beat anybody in the world. And sure. when you, if you don't get there, well, then you could lose to someone that has a lower Fargo because the level of play is just so high nowadays. And the viewers you see, the spectators you see are all league players from the BCA Pool League and the USA Pool Leagues here for their world and for their national uh, uh, tournaments. At the Rio, playing on the seven foot Predator tables. Yeah, Feder ran a little bit too far from the eight to the nine. Just trying to get to the center of the table and have a comfortable angle. Now he is straight and can still draw back, but a little bit more awkward. And well, if that's awkward, <laughs> I want to be awkward all the time. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, this could have easily went wrong, and he played a perfect shot. Great shot from Feder. 2-1. Boy, they've, uh, they've traded racks. But now Feder. Adds one to his score. There's four ballrooms here at the Rio, full of Predator seven foot tables, 300 plus tables. We have 18 nine foot tables for the pros for these tournaments. We also have the Alpha Las Vegas Women's Open going on at the same time in conjunction with this one. Second day for them. Today's matches, there's some final 32. We'll get in just a little bit. A couple of hours, we'll be playing the final 16. And right down the line. So let's see if he can produce another killer break here. That three ball almost went again, and now, oh, he's made a four. Apologize, but I'm sure he's happy to get back. See, not a super square hit. I think that's to where the balls reacted a little bit different mm -hmm. than last break, but the result is still there. He's got a shot in the one. At 2 p.m., we'll start with the final 16. 7 p.m. we will have the quarterfinals and then tomorrow we will have the semifinals at noon with your final at 4 p.m. for this tournament now the Las Vegas Open. Yeah, tough layout here with the 7-8. Seven, 7 doesn't go in the top left corner in this view. And now Fedor does have a, an angle on the 2, which is not ideal to get to the 3. Will he follow around the 7-8? Yeah, top spin, top right. So back on track now. Expect him to just leave the cue ball in the center of the table. I think his best option might be center of the table, then go three rails on the five, back to the center of the table. And then two rails for the six to cut the seven in the top left corner. He'll work it out. He's just going to keep, like you said, keep the cue ball there. And now just come around the six. We could draw this towards the nine. Yeah, you could draw. You mm -hmm. could also go two yeah, rails in between and get to the center. Yeah. But yeah, I always like to go forward. It's, the, it's a more natural way of play. Definitely agree. I like I like to, to, to take the little three rail. But the draw is more clinical. So yeah, I played it well. Now yeah, he, I felt like he wanted to be a little bit more straight, so he could 
get a little higher on that long wheel, top long wheel on this view. So he might have to go around the angles here, but I'm not sure if he can. Uh, it's a difficult shot here. Maybe he will have to settle for the safety behind the eight. If he can just end up on the long rail, and yeah. from there just play the stop shot on the seven and glue the cue ball to the eight. Well, he's looking. I think he's looking at playing the seven. But maybe you're right with the with the safety. Eh? He's looking down to see where he would send the seven. Watch. Good to watch his mind at work here. Couldn't really get closer than this, and he's left himself a little tough. Not really. He's left himself exactly where he was trying to get. Well, from here, the safety is not an option at all because the seven is going to come back and run into the cue ball in the eight. Can he still make the seven from here? I think he actually was yeah. playing. Yeah, he's banking the seven. He's going all in. He wants to get on the hill. Uh, it's going to go in. But he had called a different pocket, so it doesn't count. So it's the option for Copigny, and I'm sure he's not giving this back. Now he doesn't expect to miss that. He's been playing so much back pool and everything else. I mean, it's it wasn't the toughest bank, but then still, it's always a risk. It, everything's based on percentages. I don't care who the banker is that's banking the ball. Uh, it's not a straight in ball in hand shot. Yeah, managed to do well in stealing this rack here. We'll go to two each. Of course, if he does make any other mistake, just but you will always like to be in this position. Gopini about to tie things up here in this race to four at two. Yeah, two each, and it was a good opportunity for Feather to get on the hill. The only thing that has not been really go going for Gopini is the break. And talking about break, we'll go for a short well, one minute. Yeah. What a shot this is. There's a highlight shot. Brilliant if I ever shot. saw one. Brilliant shot from Roland Garcia. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is a class in kicking from these two and jumping and positional play. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Well played. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. No, cue ball. He's all right, and he's got a shot on the two. Great shot again with that jump stick. And welcome back to the Alpha Las Vegas Open here. Rio All Suites and Hotel. But of course, had the Really good opportunity to get on the hill here, 3-1. Yeah. But instead, he went two each and Copigny breaking. Looks like he's changing from the side, from the other side wheel though. Yeah. The other side, so looking to make a ball and get something after. And he oh. did, one ball straight in, two ball dresses up. Yeah, and he will and like to see this. Rack, yes. And the two ball spinning and saying, shoot me. Tough position from the three to the four, though. That still needs some work. I think if you can get nicely on the four, then everything is open.
play with draw to get yeah. as straight as possible on the three. He's gonna come right over across the across the five. Yeah, like I said, from here, it just has to stay in line. If he can get straight on the five, like I would really be focused on getting straight on the five so I can give myself a really good angle on the six. Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry about making the ball if you're straight, more worried about where you leave yourself after. Well, these balls to make the clearance and um, get on the hill. Co defeated Nathan Niergaard, Sharik Sayed. Sharik's been playing very well lately, very well. And Yoshiro Kitatani to get to where he's at now in the final 32, never losing a set. Federer defeated Vitali Batsuda, Chris Reinhold, and Su Ju Jui An. Nathan Ryan. Again, never losing a set. I think he has a small angle on the seven ball, so might stun the cue off for the eight in the right side pocket. Yeah, I think he's okay just to follow up right there. Could also stop the cue ball, but I'd rather shoot a lot in the side instead of the longer shots, of course. The more distance you go for, the more risk there is. Yeah, when it lays that well. Oh, he didn't get as straight as he wanted there, so now he's going to have to go around the table. But just a little bit of right hand English. And he can come towards, down towards the 10. Or straight up on either side of the 10 works. Yeah, 50 yard line on this 10 ball, and this is to get on the hill, and Fedor will be kicking himself. For taking that bank. Or missing that bank, either one. Ooh. And instead of Fedor kicking himself, I have a feeling Ko is. Wow. Yeah, nobody expected that to happen, and well, instead of Kopi He on the hill, Fedor Gors on the hill. Yeah, Fedor says thank you, but. Um, it's still there, so I'm going to take the hill first. And sometimes that's how things change hands. Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of players on the tour as well to where they can play so good for such a long time, such, such a long period, and then when they start to make it one or two mistakes, now they really break down. Like there's so many of them. So I really don't want to see that happen because he only missed one shot. Mm -hmm. Besides that, he really did not make any mistakes this set. So hopefully he can go to the chair and say, okay, come on, hopefully I get another shot and still be able to steal the set from Federer. This young man sitting in the chair right now has a very strong mindset. I have a feeling he'll come back a little tougher. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Another big break coming from Federer. Five ball, oh, again that five ball hit the point twice. It's open for Copenhagen, yeah, he, he knows. Did it go in? Didn't it go in and it no. came back out? No? Or did it get? No, just, just oh, look I at the five. I gotta watch that again, yeah. That five ball got point, point, oh, and wow. then the six ball hit the point on the other side. Like he's so super close and. I glanced at the five and then, then looked away because I thought it was in the pocket. Well, I think that one ball goes, so one, two, three is the biggest work here. Neither player has won two games in a row after five games. Well, he needs a small angle. He's got it, and he can stun right there, center of the table. I don't really see big problems. Just small things like maybe getting from the seven to the eight because where the nine is could be a little bit more difficult, but 
Well, I think the only big problem he could have is not forgetting that 10 ball. Yeah. He just missed. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people will be questioning, like, wh why, how did he, why did he miss that? Well, the only thing I can imagine is him being a little bit too short because when he played at nine to the side, mm -hmm. he could have dropped down a little bit more and have a more comfortable 10 ball. Oh, of course, no, the yes. That I mean, that would be the only more. reason why, but then still it's not an impossible shot for him at all. So it was more of a positional miss than actually the ball miss. Yeah, I think I would blame it more on that. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, it's not like he couldn't make it from there. and Yeah, he should. So... But doesn't matter, just forget that 10 ball and get, get this game on the board. Try to get the cue ball. Well, he will get the cue ball right about where it's at now. For the six, across the table for the seven, and of course, probably around the, the horn up on top for the eight, in the same pocket as the five. Let's see if I can. That'll be his choice, though. So. Yeah, nice angle to go one rail to the center of the table. Be a little further. I think he would like to be a little bit more straight on the seven. Not completely straight, but a little bit more straight. So when you play with the inside, just barely got there. Now, if he had been a little bit more straight, he could end up further, better, further on the... Uh, higher. Higher, yeah, higher the on, the, yeah. on the long rail on the left and get better on the eight. Yeah. Now he might have to shoot a little bit more angle shot on the eight. Yeah, since the table's still fairly fairly new, uh, that inside English uh, won't grab as much as it would on your typical club table, so you can't get so low on the bottom rail. Yep. Yeah, call this extension. Yeah, he knows this is the most important shot from here. He caught real yeah. first, and now, again, he's a little longer, and getting on that nine ball is more tricky. Yeah, I think he's just going to draw the ball to the side rail and try to get in the middle of the table. Take the distance as he has and come back. He's lined up perfect. Bring it straight up for the 10. It's not a good stroke, though. Smooth strike here. Boom. And now, this 10 ball is a lot easier than the one before, so we'll go to double hill here. Yeah, this 10 ball, he positioned himself where it was unmissable. And Feather breaking in my eyes better than Copigny so far. Yes, but definitely. But then twice he failed to at least make the balls to the side or get something else going. That was Dennis Grab Grabe that you saw behind Copigny. He's, there's three pro ta uh, three tables, three and a half foot tables right to the right behind Cope. We're playing three other matches. So right. Three each, and last time Ko broke from this side. He did have a good result, making the one in the side and a shot on the two. Is he able to do this again? Side. And the one ball on the side, straight in. And where is that two ball ending up? Yeah. Oh, I think he might be able to make it, though. It's a long shot. Of course, it's not straight in. It's a long shot. I think he will be able to do something with this two ball. The cue ball was herded down, down the rail there. Three kisses it took. Yeah, I don't think he can make it from the other view I just got. Can still hit it thick. So, might have to play a good safety here. The opposite sides, maybe use the eight in between or 
four nine. Bank this just past the three and keep it on top of the table at the upper part. You'll have balls in the air. Yeah, he called the bank. Played it with right spin. It was a really close contact, though. I think he's got the save. But yeah, he's he has left the jump. And the mm -hmm. good thing about the jump, if you make it, the cue ball is guaranteed to go long reel, long reel. And you might have the three in the side. So there's a big reward to go for this. Of course. Big jump here. Yeah, big shot. Well, while he prepares this shot, I'll uh, go over some of the matches going on right now. You have Roland Garcia, Guac Duong, Guac Hong. Vietnam, Evan Lunda, Conrad Jushishin, Shane Van Boni, Eklund Gachi, Bojek Shevchek, and Joshua Filler, Elvin Ocean, Jun Ling Chang. That's a great match right there. You're two to one. Oh, he's got fortunate. Very fortunate. Well, sometimes fortune follows the good result. The good result was he jumped it and um, executed it even though he missed the the pocket completed the jump Victor Zelinski and Mishko Fortunski two Polish players battling it out David Alcaide and Pichos Labutis Mario He and Oliver Sholnoki Jesus Atencio and Daniel Maciol Peter Alawaldi and Dennis Grabe Tyler Steyer and Mika Eminen Alex Kazakis and Sanjin Belovanovic. Rail first here. Oh, yeah, I was thinking he might have went for that two ball because the two of the eight was kind of big. And also, Kopingi got a little fortunate here. I don't think Federer can cut this two. Let's see again. Drew the cue ball back. They found each other again. And another. Does he swerve this a little bit to get to the ball? The back rail and the two ball? Or will he just jump over the nine? No, I don't like the jump in this case. It's too much open space mm -hmm. to leave that two mm -hmm. ball if you jump it. If you kick this. Yeah. Messe kick. You only have to hit the left side of the two. The cue ball will go towards the seven. Oh, caught it a little thick. Is he going to hit a rail? No. No, no the rail. The ball spin. Spun the ball a little bit too much. And then the last three matches I haven't mentioned was uh, Ku Lin Wu and then Yu Lung Chang. That's a, there's a player I like seeing again here. And he's doing well to get to the uh, final 32. Max Lechner and Alvin Anjito. Vitali Patsuda, who lost to Federer right here on this table, and Petri Makonen. Those are your 16 matches going on at this time. All fighting to get to the final 16. Yeah, so big opportunity for Federer. He's got a little straight on the three, and there's no no open shots for the four. It's either the four ten combination, or the four in the same pocket as the three. He's trying to force his way over there, and I think he just barely got there. Can he shoot that four ten in the side and maybe get the cue ball behind the nine? It's a two way shot, or just park it behind the ten. Yeah, he's taking no risk. Wow, that's a really strong safety shot. They glued the cue ball and has not left the easy one-rail escape. 
will be minimum two rails. I think that's what he's going for here. Short rail, long rail. Loser of this match will end up with $1,200. Good hit and no nice result for Copigny. Oh, he's left the combo, which could be a little tricky, but on the other side, every chance you give Federer at this moment, you will not like it. If you open the door, he will come in. Yeah. yeah it's still a little tricky, though. Can play the combo, but the four is gonna move more than you would think so. Only two seconds. Oh, he cheated the pocket there. Well, he knows that the table's still sliding pretty good. Yeah, that was the biggest shot, that four ball. Yeah, from here. It's not too much work, doesn't have to move the cue ball around too crazy. Looking to get straight on the eight, or maybe a really small angle, nine in the side. Yeah, he just pretty much stop it there. Now he comes back. From pretty much the first set is done. Yeah, Fede just gets away with it. That lockup safety on top of that ten was big. He didn't get a uh, ball in hand from it, but he uh, got a shot that he could make, which led to this 10 ball. Yeah, so. Now it's official, Copigny has lost his first set of the tournament. Yes, it is. There's Christina Tekat right behind Federer there. And we'll go for a short two minute break as Federer is leaving, oh, both players leave the arena. We'll be right back. action but the players are still on the break so you can fill in a few details of what's going on. Uh, Shane Van Boning has won the first set and leads in the second set 1-0. And 
if you are thinking about joining a Pro Billiard Series event, if you're like, wow, those arenas look so cool, I would love to play in those, then head over to probillardseries.com because the entries for the Wisconsin Open has opened up. And I'm sure Christina Tkach and Federer will be in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's locked in to play all the events. Well, he's played eight events so far. This is his ninth. And he's won uh, three or something. He's won two three. Or three yeah. Two for twenty-five thousand. The very first one in Arizona for twelve thousand. Uh, he's won seventy plus thousand dollars in the eight events he's won. Yeah, it's nice. They're still building, of course, the the prize money. Mm -hmm. Like they started off smaller and slowly. Like it's it like it's really catchy. A lot of people like it, and they're spending their money. We're getting more sponsors, and yeah, everything is growing. Yeah, I'll tell you how what it's growing. I remember the first year of this tour or the PBS, first place paid twelve thousand. Now it's paying twenty five. Second is thirteen, which is more than the first place paid. Uh, Seventy five hundred for third. Well, we also never really had a professional tour like this, like a tour with many events, all the same standards, the same equipment, clean the balls every time. The prize money is at least worth coming for, you know, like we've never really had something like this. So it's also a little bit more structure for the players, which I am a big fan of. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I can remember a tour uh, probably before your time because I don't think you were born yet. There was a camel tour that was pro and uh, then the IPT tour there was, but this is very structured uh, and we have two tours now that the players, they have, wow, there's just, there's so much opportunity for the players now. And I, I'm surprised they haven't uh, uh, built some kind of players union or players association to get, get some um, leverage. Yeah. So both players back. He started in the first set, so Federer has the break in the second set. Here we go. And he's found it again, the two in the side. Big crush, and how is the one ball ending up? Oh, that eight ball might have ruined the party. But we get to watch it again, that's the nice part. The eight ball went four reels around, bumped to four, and then here it's... Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's awfully tight. I think you can see it. Well, if you can see it, then not yeah. a too difficult layout. Yeah, it looks like you can see it. I wonder what uh, Kopi is thinking about that missed ten ball now. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why he left the arena, because he really needs to focus on the now and not about the what mm -hmm, if. Mm -hmm. The what ifs come later, the moment where you start to evaluate about the match, and you go like, okay, I gotta work on this, I gotta work on this, I want to be nicer with this and this. That's what I do afterwards. I'm trying not to do it during the match, mm -hmm. because from there you can only break yourself down. One of the things about the first set is neither player ever won two games in a row. Yeah, Federer had that opportunity to go 3 1 up yeah. and then made a mistake on the seven. Yeah, he went to the yeah, bank. Yeah, couldn't make the seven and then it was all close till the end. And this match could really go close all the way to the end. Very similar to last night's match between um, Alex Pagelein and Tyler Steyer. Only they were winning their games two games in a row. And then one game and two games and then one game. And it went right down to the, to the very, very, even the, the shootout went the same way. Two rails in between the eight and the nine. Doesn't want to get straight on the six. But he does want to get perfect, which he did. Yeah, I yeah, know, great angle, but if he got straight on the six, that seven ball is awfully long. So, managed to do well. That would be 
good for Federer to start again with that breaker run. He's had the same thing in the first set. Broker ran the first. Coming back to the eight aside. Came up a little short. But he's okay. You can yeah. still play top spin, hair of right. So long rail, short rail. He's always going to go towards the nine in the side. So it's My not horrible, but he would have liked to be a little bit more straight, obviously. My favorite kind of shape is line position. Coming right at the ball in the line you want to make it. Two rails right at the nine ball. Watch the ski ball. Shane leads the second set, 3-0 over Eklund Kachi. Yeah, so they might be done early, and Gorst keeps on steaming here. They might be done early too, 1-0. Break and run from Feder Gorst. Yeah, well, Shane, Shane and Kachi started early. Earlier than we did. Jun Ling Chang is 3 2 up over Alvin Ocean in the first set. Conrad Yushushin is up 3 1 over Evan Lunda in the first set. Luang Kwak Hong is up 3 0 in the first set over Roland Garcia. And Mishko. It's tied at two with Victor Zelinski. David Alcaide, 3 2 over Idris Labutis. Let's see if Feather can break the balls that great again, like we had before. Made the two in the side, expecting to do the same thing. Expectations were delivered. Yeah, the two ball went straight in the side, and Cuba got a couple kisses. But in the end, we will definitely not complain with that one ball being in front of the pocket. When the one ball dresses up like that, and when you make a ball on the break, and the one ball dresses up like that, and the rack spreads like this, made two balls on the break, and. All he has to do is hit just above center on, on, on the cue ball and get perfect shape on the three to come back for the four. Maybe a hair of right spin to get a little closer to the three. But just getting from the three to the four is key shot here. Which is not horrible. He still got the cut on the four, which is automatic to get on the five. But it's a little bit more tough than I expected him to leave himself. Mm -hmm. Good thing he's bumped the eight to an open position, so before it would only go in the sides. Now it's obvious to shoot in the corner. You know what I like about this shot is you don't have to worry about your speed. You can shoot the shot with a full stroke come all the way down and come back towards the five in, in, in a perfect line. Yeah, very good. Good pace, not queuing over the 10, I think. And now it's back to work for Feather and 
most likely to get 2-0 up unless he takes his eye off the shot itself. It looks like Federer will, for the first time, win two games in a row. So the first time this match. So we got a little straight on the seven. So decided to just play a little longer position on the eight. But the story you can see is really confident in his in his technique because a shot like this, a lot of people would be very nervous to shoot this. For him, it's just work. Mm -hmm. Quite short on this nine ball, and we'll have to shoot quite a tricky nine ball. The only way I can see him play this is with low left. We go around the angles, three bills. Center left, I like. I'm not sure if center left, if he. Oh, yeah. Ah, now here, will Co take the bank or will he play the safety? That's a big, that's out of the middle of the table, it's a tough bank. He's caught on the bank. Or oh, right hand pocket. I like that shot. Yeah, I think it's go time. He's already let, yeah. let off the hook here. Now it's just a matter of making the ball. Cuba always going two rails to the ten ball, but he's got that nine ball too wide, and yeah, and he's left Feather a good shot here. So high inside spin, I right. Float the nine ball in, and he still gets that two game difference. Shane has just defeated Eklund Kachi. Two straight sets. Yeah, Fedor Gorst is also on two. Yeah, not happy probably because he, you know, like that last game, it was just routine. Yeah. We'll go for a short one minute break. Be right back. I like the format and I don't like the format. It's like a hate and love, you know, because you don't want to go for a shootout, but you want to win. And sometimes you can't get away without playing the shootout. Um, but I won it once, so I feel capable to win again. Um, and I feel really great to be back here in USA because there is a big crowd. There are always people who are watching and it's just more fun to have spectators, especially a huge uh, crowd. And I'm really looking forward. And there's a new format as well for the final stage for the last 64. And I'm looking forward to play that because that gives you more zone not to play the shootout. And I'm looking forward for that. Welcome back to the Alpha Las Vegas Open here in the Rio All Suites and Hotel. We have George Teachea here in the booth with myself, Tim de Ruiter. And Fedor Gors is breaking. He's up 2 0 and he's breaking very good this match. Very well. He's made. What's that? Is it the eight ball? That's yeah, I think, the it's, one? I think it's the eight. He's been making the eight a lot here in the side pocket. Oh, got a little bit too low. Is there something else? Six ball, no, so open table for Copigny. And that's the first time that the player in this match has won two games in a row. But he came up dry for the third. If 
fighting hard to get to the final 16 and one of these guys goes home. Well, they're not going home because next week we'll have the World Tembal Championship starting this Tuesday. The low side of the two, I think he got there a little bit far. He cuts his two ball and has to make sure he doesn't bump the five. The tough work is not done yet. A little cut on the three. On the two to get to the three, excuse me. He'll go right by it and play the three ball in the same pocket. Oh, unless he gets a nibble. And he did. Now he's got to play a combo. Yeah, and in case he doesn't like the combo, he can still cut it to the bottom left corner. Just mm -hmm. try to get the cue ball in the center of the table for the four and to scrape through this game. Yeah, I think he's going for it. Inside English here. Three rails around the 710. Well, you could also go low left and then go to the center of the table and take a tougher four with the bump on the nine. Just going top spin. Yeah, beautiful shot there from Copigny. Good recovery and maybe a little confidence boost for himself as well. Six and five hovering over two pockets. Better has yet to lose a set in this tournament. Co lost his first one, the first set they played here. Will we'll like to stay on the low side here. Doesn't want to get the angle towards the short rail. Yeah, low side or straight was both going to be well, and now you can draw back the eight in the top left corner. Yeah, he got a little straighter than he wanted to get, didn't he? Uh-oh. Yeah, he really took the risk there. Oh, he's corner hooked. Oh. Yeah, quite surprised he let his stroke go that much. Maybe he was feeling like he was always going to be ending up on the short rail, but... Mm -hmm. and I think, indeed, he is hooked. Might be having the messe here, a small messe. Very oh, nice. Shot. What a beautiful job that was. <laughs> Feather tapping his lap. I mean, it doesn't really get better than this. No. This was absolutely amazing. Converts for an X. Making up one of two games. Yeah, that was such an important shot, too, because if he had missed that, the set is basically over. Yeah. So Especially the way uh, uh, Federer's breaking. Yeah. yeah. So it was such a big shot, and we might still have a little spurt in him to make a match here. Oh, uh, I, th I don't think there's any might involved there. <laughs> this guy's not well, going anywhere. <laughs> he was very gracious. Uh, 
last night or was it the night before, the night before a friend of mine asked me to buy some co-tips and uh, and soft and he was walking by and I asked him for them and he says uh, sure come over to my where I have my case and all three brothers were there I should have taken a photo of it I didn't uh, but they're very gracious and was able to pick up a couple of tips from them I understand they're rather nice well they, they both are one of the nicer guys in the tour mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. like they they're always good for the fans they always take time appreciation you know it's it's a good thing that's why they also have a lot of fans yep and, and that's why the, the crowd is now full too like it, it all has impact on each other and that's exactly the purpose behind these whole tours and championships with the league championships coinciding is the amateurs get to be around them take photo shots get to play them get to know them they build a brand Nice little bump on the three, and now I think he's opened up the whole rack. I think the five ball does go in the same pocket as the six, so good opportunity for Copenhagen. Yeah. And if he can get something going here, he might go back to two each instead of three. Yeah, maybe they'll start winning in ten, right? Two, two at a time, huh? Yeah. Win their games too, because if he wins here, he, he, he wins two in a row. And if they split sets, the next set they win three in a row. Uh, then it goes to a shootout. <laughs> this would be a great, great shootout. Well, it has been a great match too. Yeah. I don't feel both players have been playing their best, well, but it ha really has been a good battle yeah. so far. Well, yeah, they won't. I think both of them only made one mistake. You know, we all know what both players are capable of, and. But it, it, it stays tough for players to, you know, especially when you know you're also playing another world champion. Like when they start to play each other, it's tough to mm -hmm. put out that oh. best game. Hard punch, and is he going to get far enough? Yeah, he's played it very nicely, and this is to go two each. He came down for this one. He turned around the second set. Yes. Yeah. Little well, momentum going on for Copenhagen Yi here. Well, that 10 ball miss, you know, made him pay attention. Slapped himself in the face and said, uh, don't do that again. We'll go to a break. Be back in a minute, folks. Yeah, I feel unbelievable because last year I won a couple good tournaments. Uh, I won like a... Uh, the first of the year I won Derby, then I won the World Cup Pool, I won the US Open, I won the, the World Elbow and Mosconi. So it's, it was a, like a dream for me, but uh, I feel, I feel in the, at the beginning of the year I feel like a little bit pressure because I, I had a good year last year. But uh, this year I, I won the World Nine Ball, so I feel really confident. I'm looking for the rest of the season, but now I, I, I feel so focused in the Alpha Open and the World Elbow. And we are back to the live action now. The first set, neither player won two games in a row. The second set, they're winning by two games each time. Better wins the first two, Ko wins the next two, and breaking. Since Ko has changed to this side, he's been making the one a lot more. Twice. This one, high. this one time it came too high, but that nine ball flew in. Where did it come from? <laughs> See that break again. What came? Let's just watch this nine ball's in the corner. He catches the kiss off the five and flies in the in the side pocket. And the five, after getting kissed, uh, blocks the cue ball. 
first yep. shot of the one. And so we'll have to push. Might. You know, you can go really defensive and push the eight together with the two. Mm -hmm. Because there's no really obvious attack shot on the one. So then you get the defense play and to stretch the game out a little bit. And that's exactly what he looks like he's going to do. And. Uh, no, he just oh. pushed the two ball to the short rail. And he's also left to jump. Well, Zelinski has defeated Mishko Fortunski in straight sets. Yeah, and I know Coping he likes to use his jump cue. It's his own Co Brothers jump cue. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are a big fan of that product, and he has been making a lot of jump shots. He usually does. So I will not be. Exp I, I will be expecting him to bang that one ball out and get the cue ball behind those three balls. I like the simplicity of it. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> what a good shot from Kopinyi. And Feder is no beginner with the jump cue. No, Feder is, <laughs> is a very strong jumper too. Oh yeah. But I don't think he's got a jump uh, jump shot in mind here. Two rail kick. The side pocket is dead in the way for him, so he's had to spin around it. He's going one rail. He might have called the, the corner. Top right corner in this view. Or is he going two rails? Maybe the 10 ball. Yeah, really did not spin at all. And yeah, really wide angle he chose there. So ball in hand for Coping and Coping you should have been 3-0 down, and this is the opportunity to get on the hill first. Uh, I th think I would shoot this 110 combo. Yeah, depending. I don't think that 3-ball goes. There's a 3-7 combo, obviously. But if, the, if it's a little bit tricky, I will understand if he shoots it. Uh, wait till you see. Uh, he's not going to shoot it. He's going <coughs> Well, it might be looking easier on the screen than it, yes, it is for the I players. Agree. So it's just pushing that 10 ball away so he gets a little bit more room in the bottom side of the table. Now just needs one shot. If he can go in between the 5 and the 6 for the 3 in the top left corner in this view, then I think the whole game is solved. The puzzle is solved. Funny players don't like to play position with just speed, but he did and executed it perfectly. Yeah, good shot there and needs one more good shot though. Not ideal on the three, but can still play low left. Get to the other side of the four. He can also yeah, decide to hold it, but then uh -oh. the seven ball comes into oh. play. <laughs> <laughs> Scares into play, you mean. Just barely got, a little got scary. there. Got a little scary. Just got okay there. Two rails for the five in the bottom left corner, and he's a little bit short on this. He might be able to cut this in the side and still hold the cue ball. I think I like that better. He has called a five just in case he touches a six, but I would not want to touch a no, six. No, because he may, may not have a shot on it. He's got to come back up. It's hard not to come back up. No, he played it clean and played it well.
two rails running up to that eight ball guaranteed to have an angle if you play it this way nice. looking very confident at the moment so coping me on the hill three two such a big turnaround here comes down to his break I think in the next mm -hmm. game if he gets an open shot after if he makes a ball and gets an open shot after then we might be in for the third set I think we're we're in for the third set he uh, seems to be breaking well enough to keep Federer in his chair Conrad Yushushin one set to nothing over Evan Lunda Jeff McGee, our referee from Shreveport, Louisiana, right the balls and hands go to the cue ball and about to break to try to win the second set and send us to the deciding third. got kissed away on its route to the side pocket and well second prize he has not left something for Feather though I like that looks like David Ankaidi just took set number one over Pegis Lapuntis push out and quite obvious safety shot here shooting the one into the three bring the cue ball two rails nearby the eight behind the nine ten that's yeah. what I like would be even perfect if you can get behind the eight yeah and it also that would be, be a big trap it also be perfect if he doesn't make the five I don't expect that to happen I just think it's a possibility when you don't want to do it, up jumps the devil. Yeah, and then you <laughs> fluke that ball and then That's you right. can shoot yourself. Oh, did he get enough behind that seven? Can't tell from this angle. No. Players are on a 30 second shot clock with uh, 60 seconds after the break. One extension per rack per player. looks like he's doubting a little bit if I'm doubting a lot I'm trying to thin the one ball on the right side because if you're not sure on how thick you can hit the one then I'd rather just go with something I'm sure with perfect speed for both the cue ball and the one Bringing both cues back. Lays down the playing cue. Takes up the jump cue. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> and that might be set winning jump shot there. And he gets on the three ball. Kept that ball in the air a long time and landed it softly. Compared to the speak, you know. sure where the wheel can fall off here. You can drive right drive right to the third set. Are you trying to shark him? <laughs> uh, no, it's just so wide open. There's no, yeah, no real risk. Just, yeah. or am I trying to jinx him? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, this, this case is he's, he's got a little bit more angle on the five, so he'll end up with a little bit more angle on the six. But then still he could play for the seven in the side mm -hmm. as well if he cannot hold the cue ball. Yeah. So can even play to the short rail and out if he doesn't like to hold the cue ball. Not sure if he's gonna roll forward a little bit. So he can make sure to follow down for the What's he looking again? Oh, he's got more angle than I thought. So now he's looking to play the seven on the side. Yeah, yeah that's why I was saying yeah. if you don't get straight and don't even bother if he gets to the side, he can always draw back. If he gets straight on the seven, he can get he can draw back. If he gets a nice angle, he can stun over. He seems to be thinking it's a little tricky. In this case, he could also draw and shoot the seven in the same side pocket if he really doubts it. Played the two rails and did he get the least straight to the corner? He has a little angle. He's got the right angle to go towards the eight with the cue ball. Plays the seven to the corner, a little bit of uh, stun, and he's on the eight. Yeah. Perfectly. to go to the deciding set. Yeah, third. Third set coming here. Colton <laughs> Yee. Had to be t down 3-0 in the second set. He was down 2-0 and he won four games in a row. Won four games in a row and Feder in that third game really let him go. A big momentum swing here. Now, instead of a shootout in this final 64, the little tweak to the format, they go to a third and deciding set instead of a shootout, deciding shootout. So there's a possibility of six more games without it going to a shootout. If he wins four in a row again, there'd be no shootout. Yeah, the change in the format from the single elimination, uh, 64 players were playing an uh, extra set. And then if we go hill hill, then we got the shootout. Nice cue ball there, but I don't think he made a ball on the break. No, the one ball hit the point and came back. Well, the one good thing about Coe's breaks are that um, the one ball's not dressing up. Not leaving really much of a shot. So they got to play around it. A push, a safety.
Yeah, definitely a safety. It's not difficult to hit the one. Mm. It might be a little bit more difficult to get it safe. Well, he's choosing to jump this. Yeah, jump bank, holding the cue ball behind the tent. He drew the ball trying to get behind the eight ball. So complete control of the jump. <laughs> yeah, there we have the replay. Almost got covered by the five or the eight. That one ball leaked out and long shot for Feather, but could be with high reward. Fetters looking at this one ball, coming around there. Two balls out in the open. And as he looks at this, keep in mind, we are at the CSI Expo, where Q Sports International and the Predator Group are sponsoring, along with Alpha Coin, Camus, Cyberts, the Dialyte Beer, Rums of Puerto Rico. Jam up apparel. Yeah, good shot there from Feather. Great speed. Ball in hand position here on the two ball. Feather on this two ball, and everything's open. Seven ball has a pocket over across from this corner. And so got a little bit straight on the three. Might have to draw back for the four in the side pocket. Yeah, right there. here. He's going to follow up, play the five ball in the corner so he can just stop it for the six. Yeah, got so straight on the four that he had to play for the five in the top left corner. Now this is an important shot. Needs a good angle on the six ball to work down for the seven in the bottom mm -hmm. right. Coming across towards the side pocket on the bottom part of your table. Uh, your screen, excuse me. Yeah, top right here. Maybe stun, a bit more stun right. Well, it looks a little yeah. soft to me. A little more speed. It's okay though, it's just 50 yard line for me. Would be good for Feather to win a rack, just to break that momentum with Kopi. E. He's won yeah. four in a row. Yeah. See if he comes around for the side pocket. On the nine ball. Well, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to, but, but yeah. He's usually really a little bit out. more comfortable. Yeah. Stroke out a little bit. And here we are with game number one of the third and deciding set. Better Gorst.
He has found more success in this Pro Billiard Series tours tour than any other player by far. And the 2022 Predator Pro Ranking Series, I mean rankings, he is number one. And what they do is they take the Fargo score of the player along with the ranking points that you get for each for your performance in the in each tournament and they add them together he has the highest yeah so he's breaking rank number two and yeah was definitely breaking better than coping all through this match but we really haven't really seen it for a couple of games now can he still pull it off i think he can it's a great breaker well, just down one game co can pull it off Gorse could pull it off, leading just one game. There we go, seven in the side, five ball in the side, nine ball in the corner, and... Two ball in the way. Yeah, I don't think that one ball goes. Yeah, not really somewhere to push out to, so you might have to play if he can hit the one, he can play safe behind the two, thinning it. Otherwise, he might be able to kick it, kick and stick behind the two. You could still see a little piece, and wow. it's a very strong shot. Looks really easy, of course, to do that, but Looks could like have easily easy. slipped a little bit too far or too short. I would I like the kick here. Well, th I think the reason why he's jumping is if he hits it full, he's sending that one ball towards uh, the yeah. 10, 4, 8, 6, and he can get a little lucky behind those balls. So he's purposely trying to yeah, get lucky somewhere. On the, on the flip side of that, if he kicks it in, he's straight in on the two. Yeah, if you don't make the kick, you leave it in front of the pocket. Well, the same with the jump. Only it's long, very long. Well, he's going for your option. Maybe he was a little bit too close to that two ball, so. Two rails. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, the shot from Coping. Now you know what not to leave me. <laughs> Look at this for a shot. Oh, I think that's one for the highlights list. Ball seems to go by the f by the eight, uh, the four ball seems to go by the eight. No, maybe not. So he's going to play the cue ball. Different place here. What? He was trying to get for the four on the side, and yeah, I think he's got quite fortunate to get so straight on the 4 10 combo. It's either the 4 10 combo or the cut in the side, and I do prefer the combination from here. But it's tough, they're also under the shot clock, there's a mm -hmm. lot of pressure in the arena, so like with the crowd. So he's, he's cutting, cutting. The side. Yeah, he's sorry, going forward, he maybe three rows. No, always oh, playing safe. That's all he for sure locks See. Federer up here. That's exactly what they do. Yeah, very good cue ball control. No ands there for babies. He wants to make sure if he shoots a shot, it's for certain at this point. Very smart play. Now let's see if smart play outdoes good play. Is a is very good shot here. Is he going to go two rails or one rail here? 
I might like to go two rails. Call the four ball in the top right corner in this field. And if you don't make it, hopefully get behind the ball. There's your answer. He's going one rail, trying to separate the balls, maybe. Such a difficult shot. Oh, and is he going to hit a rail after? Uh, not oh. yet. No, it was good. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, a <laughs> little fortunate. Both players know, of course, was not trying to go two rails. Still the opportunity for coping the difficult shot, long shot. Stop enough. it, please. Yes, it is. I we've seen a, a, one of the best matches we've seen. Oh, well, it looks to be more close. He doesn't look too happy, but I think it goes. This is such a beautiful strike. Yeah, I think it goes. Yeah, from this angle, I'm pretty sure it does. Ooh. Was still a, so he could only see a little bit too thin of that six ball. Who would have expected that after a beautiful shot on the four? Well, two rail kick here. Who would have expected that? <laughs> well, the thing is, just to make the six ball, I would be so, so convinced he would always make it. Yes. But now he's trying to go two rails to get a little bit nicer on that eight. And that's to where it gets a lot more difficult. So it looks really easy. And he's only missed it by, by a hair. This match is just so, so close. So much back and forth. So, so close. Other than than, than uh, Ko taking the second set, you know, in hand and shutting Fetter uh, down after he was down 2 0. Now they're tied. 1 1 in the deciding set. This is probably going to go to a shootout. Unless yeah, if the score ties three each, we might have the shootout. And they really share the games so far in this mm -hmm. match. So why not? to be in your chair if you just miss the shot like it with such a small well, margin you know yeah yeah uh, number one missing a shot you don't think you would miss it ever and looking at the score and knowing what comes next oh that one ball hung up on him and that's, oh, the seven ball bumped the three in, and yeah, he has got a shot on the one. Look at the one here. It's a point three times, it comes out. And the seven ball bumps the three in. Yeah, I think the key shot, of course, he still has got to make the long one and get on the two. But the key shot for me is getting on the four ball. Because mm -hmm. the four doesn't have the open pocket where the seven is. And for the other corner, that five ball is in the way to get the nice position. But let's start with the one ball first. Yeah, and the two balls on the other side of the tape. Oh, you played Look the bump this. on the five to open it, the four ball up. That's a very strong shot. Well, he's going to have to make another one right here. I think he's straight in. Or does he have enough angle to go two rails for the four? 
just past the middle of the table. Yeah, he might still be able like to go does. forward, yeah. 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 It's tight though. He may try to use the side rail. Still on the table. <laughs> well, he tried his best to at least get off that long rail. Well, he it, made that happen. <laughs> that's why he didn't control the speed Ooh. well, because it was he had to force it off that yeah. that rail. So it, it made this very possible and almost probable. My gosh, these guys are playing so well. Just so well. Yeah, good bump on the five there, and now he's back in line. He can stop the cue ball here, get to the center of the table from the six to the seven, and then go all around the angles for the eight. And right here at the center of the table. Low right, playing two rails. Yeah, nice angle now to go three rails. Short rail, long rail, and then slide over to the other long rail. Might as well wrap it out around the ten here. slow now has to cut the eight and really control the pace well and especially with those mm. soft shots they get really sensitive he doesn't have the luxury of using the bottom rail because of the tip Play that nicely and was not scared to leave himself another cut on that nine ball. Both players exuding extreme confidence in their abilities from leaving themselves tough shots like this. A perfect shot and Copigny takes the lead here. The second set, 2-1 Copigny. was a break a run so he might have found his break yeah I wonder how uh, Federer feels now about that uh, seven ball bang and that's uh, the beauty of this format is that one mistake can cost you like two or three games like it's the momentum that that's attached to it League players enjoying watching two of the best players in the world. Yeah, over 7,000 league players in this same building. This place is packed. Four ballrooms with 300 plus tables, seven foot tables for the league players, BCA World Championships and the USA National Championships held within this uh, CSI Expo, along with a World Cup video. Oh, Three nice cushion video. The women's Alpha Las Vegas Women's Open. Very nice break, good contact. If you look at the one ball, went straight in. And then just that cue ball got that bump from the three and got sent up table. So no shot on the two and we'll have to play a push out.
push to right there. Maybe push to a jump. He pushes the cue ball behind the five. I know he likes his jump cue, so yes. could be an option. Well, we also know Feder likes his jump cue, and he's aware of that. He's going to leave him a long shot. Yeah, push it like that with a lot of spin because he really was trying to get the cue ball back, back to, to the, the short rail. rail. Yeah. Yeah. Because getting glued to the rail is always a lot more difficult. Don't want to give Federer the option to draw the cue ball on this because then he could go into the nine. And what does he have here? There's a good safety shot too if he doesn't like to play the the attacking shot. He can shoot the two in between the five and the ten to the long rail, and the cue ball go two rails behind the ten, and you got the backup with the five four. Oh, he played it the other way around. Still, again, a big wall of balls. And what did he leave? He doesn't look too happy. He didn't. He let the kick shot or the slide shot off the rail there, on the side rail. But the two balls go into an open spot, so there's not much to. Oh, he can see the ball. Never mind. It looks like he can see the ball and make it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was looking at the 10 ball as the cue ball. Oh, oh, stop it, please. Why? This is... They like the applause. Wow. He just... This whole highlight shot list is just coping you so far. He's been kicking so great. Kicking and jumping, mess saying balls. What a beauty. Six ball is still a problem, but easy easy to use for a safety. I don't think they've used an extension most of the set. Or I mean, not, not most of this match, excuse me. I haven't seen too many extensions being used by either player. Play position maybe for the bank shot here. Could also go for the safety shot if he sends a six mm -hmm. ball to the short rail. Yeah, I think he's playing the safety. He's looking to get behind the 10 and have the 9-7 as a blocker as well. Looking good. As he left the thinner on the six. Don't think I so. I don't think so. I think he's going to have to uh, kick at it. He's going for the jump cue. Oh, he's called the bank. Straight back. Six ball is close to the rail though, so there might be the double kiss if he does hit it a little bit too thick. Oh, that cue ball had a lot of jump in it and He's left it in front of the pocket. All dressed up. And your opponent's going to steal your date. 
You see that Kubo is still jumping, jumped on top of the rail. Well, look how far it had to go in the air. Oh, he boy. had to. Yeah. yeah. needs to right the ship. He needs to get back to the table and then put three racks of his own up. Yeah, if Kopi yeah. runs this out, he's guaranteed to go to the shootout. Yep. And also having a chance to win the match. So, yeah, so have two must, chances. must be a nice feeling to guarantee yourself at least a shootout yeah. and then possibly a little more, you know? Well, know that he, has, he forces your opponent to win two games in a row. He's only done it once. Yeah, you don't really see him mess up from here. There it goes, Copigny is on the hill. He's guaranteed to go to a shootout or to the last 16. We'll go for a short one minute break. We'll be right back, guys. Back to the live action. Uh, Jeff McGee, the referee, has to uh, let Co know that it's his right. Yeah. He's looking at something in his hand there. Coping up 3 1 and breaking Fedor, the match. Fedor really needs to have a look at something at least to make sure he stays in his third set or yeah. he won't One be rack. able to save himself. One rack, and if Ko can keep Federer in his chair, he'll come out to shake hands. Oh, and he's made a ball in the break. Oh, where's Cue that ball? going? It's not going to reach, but there's no shot on the two. Little spin on the cue ball, and... Could it get more difficult? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Where do you push? What can I do that my opponent can't? Two of the best in the world. Well, right there. One and a half time it out. I guess he's going to bank the two ball up to the left top corner pocket and bring the cue ball behind the nine and the ten, but I don't fancy this that mu this much. So as I, if I were Feather, which I'm not, but mm -hmm. I don't like it that much, and I don't think he will like it as much either. He's giving it back. What did Co have in mind? Is he looking at banking the two ball to the corner and taking the, the cue ball? Down by the nine, up to the nine, two rails to the nine. Always oh, called the ten. Yeah, so he's gonna bank the mm -hmm. cue ball to that direction, trying to get the cue ball on the long rail behind the nine. Yeah, you might be able to make that ten ball. Oh, it's close. It's close. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, look at him smiling. Yeah, look at how close he got there. Yeah, and this is an obvious one for Feder. He's going to carry him that 10 ball in. Oh, wow, such a good effort. It's going to lose him the game, but that was a great shot. Yeah, so 3-2. Just a little break, and now this next break is going to be big. If he can have a break around here, we'll go to the shootout. Federer couldn't have asked for anything better than that to happen. He just couldn't ask for no, it. No, no, <laughs> for real. <laughs> just, just, uh, Great shot. This is it's been breaking very good all match. Yes. This might be the most important break. Yes, because yep. He's gotta make a ball on the break. He's gotta maintain control of this rack. A seven and cue ball got kissed up to the corner. He's got a shot on the one on the side. Almost scratched, made the seven, and well, he has nope. a look on the one. No. He's got a look on the one, but doesn't have a hole. Combo on the six. Uh, or is he gonna stick the cue ball behind the six? Maybe yeah, I was gonna say he's gonna look for a safety. I think if he shoots the one ball towards the 10, I think he can bury the cue ball behind the six. Yeah, bury the cue ball. That's what you just called, either behind the six or behind the eight. I don't know if he can get to the eight, behind the eight. Yeah, there we go. And it's a good cue ball. Good safety shot. Well, if Federer can come to the table with ball in hand, we're looking at the shootout. Yeah, let's call this extension. It's a little bit more time. I think this is a pretty tough one to hit. The 10 ball and the 5 are blocking the one railer, so we'll have to go minimum two rails. So this messay a little bit and a lot of left spin. Shot and great safety hit. right back. Yeah, great hit from Copenhagen. Wow. Just I don't think I've ever seen Cope play this good. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I have seen it just well, before you COVID, but there. not okay. after COVID. Yeah. I haven't seen no. him play this good. So, oh, just the amount of resaves, good kicking, great safety shots. Like they both have been playing outstanding. A good example is that shot. And then the bank on the on the ten ball. Even though it lost him the game, that was a great shot. So Feder lining up with the jump cue needs a good shot here. He's all in. Ooh. And what is he giving Co? Right the end. I think three. he got lucky, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's chuckling. Code turns around, grabs his jump cue, no doubt. Yeah, it's a difficult jump. He's very close to that three mm -hmm. ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
I believe he knows what he's doing, but very tough. Oh, what has he given Feather? The opening, the opportunity. that kill would have been going. Oh, He's what a time for, a, for, for, for a, a little mistake there. Yeah, just played center ball top spin and no right spin. He's hooked himself, grabbed the jump cue. Better jumps as good as anybody. Oh. Oh, I kind of well, when didn't he think he'd miss that. Well, also, the cue ball was most likely to run into the four, so he played with a lot of draw, drew the cue ball away from it, and that really made the shot a lot tougher as well. Yeah, so at last, coping here on the table. You can finish it here. Yeah, with right an open here. shot. Tough one, but an open shot. Uh, it's not oh tough anymore. Yeah. Beautiful shot there. Now he just has to close it out. Yeah, you can feel the tension in the arena. Oh, sure. Everybody is like whispering and, and nervous. The nervous energy is walking as fast as he is because of the time clock, of course. They wouldn't be walking so fast if they weren't in the shot clock. Only the stream tables are on the 30 second time clock. The other 16 tables that the pros play on are not. Did go a little straight on the five ball. Yeah, he, you could see his his face, he was not too happy with the position. It's still not not impossible. I have to stun the cue ball off the rail. Yeah, front he's shot. Going way back and over. Oh, he drew the cue yeah. ball in. It's a good shot. Might be queuing a little bit with the nine. Better needs a big error from Co. I don't believe he's going to get it. You don't really. Yeah, you, you got to favor him from here for yeah. sure. If he's going to get the error, it's going to be right here. Don't don't expect it. But you can still ask for it, I guess. Yeah, just three balls to get to the last 16. Mm -hmm. And the loser is out. These three balls. Just looking to get to the center of the table probably, or just stay there. Just pocket the ball. Now it's, how close do you want to get to the table? I expect him to play one rail down. Mm -hmm. To the left side of the table. Perfect oh, speed. Yeah, and there it goes. Absolutely perfect speed. Beautiful match. What a great match between Feder Gorst and Kopini. Yeah, Kopini advances to the last 16 in the Alpha Las Vegas Open, and Feder Gorst will be waiting for the World Temple to start on Tuesday. So this was George Steacea and myself, Tim de Ruiter. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you back at 2 p.m. for the men's last 16. Thank you.